uh, this encrypted text is a uh, is sent over a network or a stored in a particular utility like database or maybe a disk. Sorry, sorry. Now, this ciphertext is uh, is what is decrypted at the receiving hand to get the original meaning of the message, such that if this particular message that was sent is uh, is learned into a hand or maybe into a person that was not intended to be sent to, they will not have the original meaning of that particular message. Now let's just try something small. We try to see how we can be able to encrypt uh, something using maybe a particular simple algorithm from the alphabet. Now, suppose you want to send this message, I am a hacker, and you do not want anyone to see the message that is anyone in between to see the message. The message is just to be shared between the receiver and the sender, and uh, it's in plain text. Now, we can just decide to replace every letter with its second successive letter in the alphabet. As you can see there, the letters of the alphabet, then we are going to take every letter, replace it with the second successive letter of the alphabet. From there, we'll be able to decrypt the message into this particular cipher here, the one that uh, I am highlighting in yellow. So if anyone in between tries to access this particular text, they will not know the meaning of it unless they have the decryption key, of which it will be impossible because the, the communication has happened between the receiver and the sender. So someone in between will not be able to get the meaning of the message and uh, our message will be, will be safe or secure. From there, we can move to another illustration. Uh, a cipher that was developed by CISA. It's called CISA cipher, developed by Julia CISA. Uh, this attack is just like I've demonstrated in the, the previous slide. It uses a substitution method whereby you replace a letter of the alphabet in a particular order to make the message lose the meaning when it's being on transmission. So the sender will come up with a way that they will calculate and try to, after they calculate the meaning, they will try to put those alphabets in the way that we have calculated. Then after that, they will put the message on transit to reach the destination, which upon reaching the destination, the, the receiver will have the decryption key and will use it to, to decrypt the message. Then from there, they'll be able to get the message that uh, the sender intended to, to communicate to them. Are we together up to now? Yes, we are. Can I hear from you? Are we together up to now? Yes, Hello. we are, John. Uh, am I fast or slow? So far, so good. Sour, sour. So from there, we can try to look at the, the types of cryptography that are existing. We are just going to look at the, the major one because it's just an introductory part. Uh, we have what we call symmetric cryptography. Uh, this is a type of cryptography that uses same key for encryption and decryption. It's just like uh, giving someone, it's like just like uh, having, having, having a padlock and uh, two keys. Remember you give the sender, where the sender has one key and the, the receiver has another key. So once you, this person has the padlock, you love to give them the card box, they put whatever they wanted to put there, they lock it, and since you have that same same key, 
once it you receive that kabox with whatever it has, whether it's letters or maybe it gives, you'll be, you'll be able to open that uh, that kabox and see what it contains. So someone else in between who doesn't have a, who doesn't have that key, they will not be able to to see whatever it is in the kabox. So this type of so this type of symmetric cryptography uh, apply, uses just the same key from the sender to the receiver. The same key is used in encrypting the message and uh, the message is transmitted to the receiver. Then upon being received at the receiving hand, uh, the receiver uses that key to decrypt the message and get the message in, in a clear text and be able to get the communication that was intended to be received. Then we have another key that we just discussed above, which we call asymmetric cryptography or public key cryptography. This type of cryptography has uh, two keys, public and private, just like WhatsApp. Let me just highlight it. Public and private key. Now, public key is broadcasted to the senders, but public key remains with the receiver only. So here the, you can see this, we have a center from my diagram, we have the sender who is Bob and we have Alice who is the receiver. So Bob, uh, so since Alice is our receiver, we will have Alice keys, Alice the public key broadcasted to Bob. Now from there, Bob will, when Bob wants to send a message to Alice, Bob will use the Alice public key to send the message. He will send the message and encrypt it with Alice public key. Now, since the public key and private key for Alice work hand in hand, no one else will be able to decrypt this message in between unless they have the, the Alice's public key, not public, private, private key. So the message will go through the transmission channel and then it, it reaches Alice. Upon reaching Alice, the, the message will be decrypted using the Alice public private, sorry, private key. Then Alice will get the, the normal meaning of the message. For an instance of WhatsApp, the public key, if you have, if you are sending someone a message on WhatsApp, the public key is what you will use to encrypt the message. And now the private key is stored on their WhatsApp database. Once you download WhatsApp, the public key gets in into the WhatsApp. Then from there, once you receive the message, WhatsApp will just do that automatically for you and you'll be able to, to see that message. Are we together up to now? Any yes. question, maybe? Yes, we are. Any question, maybe? Huh? Oh, so John, I'm thinking. From you there, can we just can look at uh, some of oh. the. Okay. Hello. Sorry, I'm saying you can just yeah. proceed and you can have the questions towards the end of the session. Right, so, so. Okay. so we can look at the, some of the main encryption algorithms that are there. We have MD5, message digest function. This is used to encrypt passwords as well as checking data identity. It produces a 128-bit hash values. Then we have SHA, which, uh, which, has several, which has several versions. We have SHA1, we have SHA2, we have SHA0. We have others also. I was not able to look at them all. And also we have another main one that is RC4, which is used to create stream ciphers and uh, it's majorly applied in securing networks and also SSL, the, the web, the web, whatever, the HTTP and the HTTPS. So HTTPS, which has SSL, is secured using the 
artifon. So from there, before I demonstrate something small, I uh, wish someone could ask a question, maybe. So from there, I'm going just to demonstrate something tomorrow, uh, just to show how we can use this encryption to encrypt the data in our database. Uh, I'm going to use PHP and some basics of web, and uh, it's not going to be something that is uh, a bit complicated. I believe everyone will be able to, to understand. So, Hi, John. Yes. Oh, I can't hear anything from my end. Or okay, I'm trying. To, can you see my screen? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So from here, I have a. I've made just a simple web page uh, that has a form where we have to input the the username and the password. This is the username. We are going to input a username and the first column and password on the, 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 the second input. Then from there, we are going to send them to the database. We are going to send them first in plain text, then second. Second time, we are going to try to encrypt them and uh, see how it happens. Uh, on the other side, I'm going to show you the database. Just a minute, is it the log? So, But at first, I'm just going to demonstrate how we can just convert a normal text into a hash value. And uh, for this case, I'm just going to use MD5 and secure hashing algorithm one, that is SHF1. So uh, I believe you can be able to see the text on my, my screen, can you? or I increase the whatever. Can you see it now? Sorry, John. Yes, think... Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can. So I'm just going to put a string, she has. Then we are going to see what uh, our MD5 and SHA1 will generate. I will save the file and try to refresh uh, refresh it from my hand and see what the md5 and sha1 will generate now this is the cipher text the first one is for md5 the second one is for for s the qr hashing algorithm sha1 what is the generated 
you just in PHP, you just need to, to pass the value through that particular algorithm that you are you are given. So I have the form with me and I am going to send the data. Let's assume now I am the user. For me, I don't know what is happening after immediately I send the data to the database. The, the database administrators and whatever, whoever is handling my data, I don't know because like for me, I am presented with the maybe the login form or the registration form. So I am just going to enter a username. Let me just say she, she has, uh, then from there, I can enter the password that is, uh, let me just put one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I send it to the database. Now, the form has already submitted the data to the database. Now, if we come to the users and the refresh from my database and refresh, we can see that this second column, the data has been sent to the database, but it's in plain text plain text and data that is stored into the in the database and it's not good or maybe it's not a, an advisable behavior to be storing data in the database in the form of plain text especially where the password is involved because the database can be attached or maybe an admin or maybe someone with a malicious intent they can get access to the database and uh, we don't know what they can do with our data so this is one of the application where we can use the cryptography to ensure that our data is secure from the database. And if someone tries to gain access into the database, they will not be able to get our data in plain text. They will have maybe to struggle to trying to decrypt it. And by that time, we may have, we may detect what happened and maybe change the password and securing whatever we had installed there. So from here, I have the form. I have the PHP file that I used to send that data to the database. Up to now, are we together? Yes, yes, we are. Okay, okay now I just prepared something small uh, for the purposes of demonstration. We have now, we have the HTML form over here that is going to pick the username and the password. This is where I will pick the user, the username and the password. This is where I pick the username and uh, line number 15 and line number 19. This is where I will pick the password. Now, after picking the password, I am going to fetch that particular password from the HTML form using the PHP and send them to the database using SQL. Now, this third line, you can see from my screen, is going to fetch the user. Then the second line is going to fetch the password as given from the HTML form. Then the fifth line that you can see that has insert into users, it's going to insert that particular data that has been fetched in line three and line four. It's going to insert it into the the database. Now, from there, it's just going to be stored the way we have collected it. Now, for us to make sure that that data is, is, is secured, or maybe we have encrypted it, I'm going to pass an MD5 algorithm. So I am going to convert this particular pass, line number four, I'm going to convert it to MD5. So I'm going to create a variable uh, maybe let me just call it pass. Let me call it pass. Uh, let me just call it pass one. Or maybe let me just call it pass two because I collected the the first password. So I'm going to say pass two equals to md md five. Uh, and John, sorry, package. sorry to interrupt you, but we can't see what uh, you're doing. This for the variable. Hello. Okay. Now, after modifying that, 
I am going to the SQL statement number six. From Excuse there, me. I will modify whatever is inserted, whatever is insert, inserted to the database. So I am going to delete that John, can you hear us? underscore W and put a pass John. Two. Maybe um, some months you can call there, him on your phone. Put data into the database. Um, no, not into the database. Oh, sure, into sure. That that. HTML form that I, sh I have shown you. The data is going to be collected by. Excuse this me. Particular. Going to be collected by this particular line. This number four. Then from there, it's going to be passed through the line number five, the variable pass two, then converted to MD5. So this is the code. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Yeah. So uh yeah, it was uh we just delete this one that I have Then from there. Now, this is the form that is collecting our data that we put in the database. And not, no, 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 not the database. Our data that is we are inserting from the HTML form. But it's sending that particular data in the form of plain text. Now, I was saying that we add another variable on line number five that is going to check that particular password that has been put there and convert it into a hash. And that hash I used IMD5. So uh, I was to add a variable, just added a variable and called it pass two. Then that pass two will be equal to MD5. Then, no, 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 MD5. Then I'm going to have pass, we have, I'm going to up pass W over there. And from there, our data will be converted into a hash. And then we have to change something here. Whatever is inserted into the database, we have also to change it. And we are going to pass the value of pass two. Two. So from there, if I if go to the HTML form and refresh my 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 browser, I should be able to input some data. And if I send it, then we go to the database. I should be able to see the hash that has, that has been stored over there. So I will put the username as she hacks and password. I put it as one two three four five six. Then I send it. Has been sent successfully. So if I come to the database and refresh, we'll be able to see some funny, some words that cannot be understood. Like we can't just understand what this part, particular this person was trying to send unless you have the decryption key. You can't just So if anyone, or maybe if maybe a vulnerability occurs in our system and uh, people try to, and people get access to our data in the database, the, the person who has installed their password in form of plain text will more endangered than a person who has installed their password in form of a hashing algorithm. Maybe I can try the one for, MD5, for secure hashing algorithm one, uh, I'm just going to, Change something small. Shall one? Yes. Just changed something small. Just change the MD five over here. MD five over here. Yes, just what I deleted. Then put shall one. And from there, our algorithm will change. So if I go to the browser, go to the browser. 
calculator and I go to our HTML form. I just use the same username and the uh, password is a uh, one two three four five two. Um, one two three four five two and uh, send them to the database and it should be then from there go to the database and check whatever was inserted to the database you'll see that uh, SHA-1 has a, a bit longer algorithm than MD5 and from there our data will be stored in the in the format that uh, is a bit secure as per the for the requirements that uh, maybe set or maybe the data at least say that uh, it's much it's much a bit safer compared to the person who stored the their data in plain text. So to the developers, it's a good thing. Whatever if you are developing something, whether it's a, an Android app or a, a website or something that requires you to store some data in a database it's a, a good practice that uh, once you are handling some critical data like credit cards password or data that can be of good use or maybe that is very much essential or maybe can be used to for malicious reasons it's good that it could be stored in the form of a Cipher text so that if hackers try to gain access into our the database or into that where our data was stored, they would they would just have an easy time to get our username and password. From there, I can just look at the the applications of cryptography, uh, and you can. From whatever we saw before, we saw that cryptography is used uh, in uh, SSL or TLS. This is where once you are communicating in a website, the website that has a uh, HTTP is without hairs. Uh, normally, we are not encouraged to enter personal or maybe credentials that are uh, can be stolen. For example, something like passwords or our banking details of our uh, HTTP, because the the data that we enter there over the forms can be watched by by other mali the other guys with malicious intent. Or even if maybe someone tries to be man in the middle, they can just easily watch over what we have entered in our forms. Another application of cryptography is a uh, Digital digital signatures. This particular application of digital signatures is used to prevent modification of data by generating a hash for a particular set of data. Let's say we have uh, we are trying to upload something. Let's say it's an uh, an application, or maybe you know, I've seen most of the operating system come with a digital signature because. Once the, the user there from the far end is trying to download uh, that particular file, it, might, it can be modified through money in the middle, or maybe it can be just be modified uh, while in transit. And once it's modified, that particular person who downloaded who downloads it on the other hand might, might not download the might not download the, the file that was uh, intended to be downloaded. And this modification can lead to addition of malware and uh, make our users from the far end to be compromised. Another application of cryptography is a uh, secure online banking. This is where the storage of passwords and the other stuff come in now. That's why maybe you hear the, the famous phrase from uh, Maybe the Hempesa or maybe the bankers over there telling you that uh, Piniaco Siriaco, because that pin of yours is stored in the database in the form of a hash. Even that person who is uh, the customer care or the, the person who is uh, maybe handling the systems doesn't know your password. You are the only person who knows your password. That is where you see the, the people who are trying to do social engineering, they try to ask you the password, they try to make sure that you reveal details 
that can make them guess your password. Uh, another application of uh, cryptography is where we have uh, secure chatting services. This can be well explained by our previous scenario of WhatsApp, where we have end-to-end -end encryption. And if anyone tries to tap, or anyone tries to be man in the middle, in between, they will not be able to, to see whatever we are communicating. And if they see it, they will see something that is encrypted. And uh, it may not be easy to get whatever we, we, we communicated over the network. Uh, we can look, we, we also have a secure or maybe encrypted emails. This is most of the cases is used by organizations or government to send so to, to send those emails, you know, like there are those particular information that should not get out there. Let's say, for example, defense, the Ministry of Defense, or maybe some critical data about the government. It has to be sent by in a manner that is very safe to ensure that it doesn't get to anyone out there because some messages, if they just get to anyone out there, they can reveal a lot of secrets about the government or maybe about an organization. It's also used by the people who operate on, a, let's say the, the, the dark web guys. Most of them are trying, they are trying to be anonymous. So, they, they use secure or encrypted mails, which applies cryptography to ensure that the email that they have sent to people they are trying to transact or communicate with on the dark web is safe and doesn't get to anyone else out there because of you know, their security or maybe their other reason. Uh, the last application that we can look at is the cryptography. Just a minute. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the interruption. Uh, so I'm looking at the last application of cryptography. While well, we have cryptography, this cryptography involves, uh, you have had the transaction of Bitcoins, you have had uh, the crypto mining. This happens in a manner that uh, everything is secured, everything is encrypted. In a, so in a way that if anyone else tries to get, to follow up what was uh, happening, unless they were from the receiving hand or from the the the, the 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 sending hand they will not be able to know what happened in between in between the network or in between the databases so up to this point are, are we still together yes yes so let me just show the last thing as I conclude. So we have a, now that we have a hash, uh, most of the organizations where you have stored password, they encourage you to use a, a strong password or maybe a password that, uh, that is not commonly used. Now we have some online platforms where you can just, once someone attacks a database, they can just go to those platforms and uh, since they gained access, how they got the, the hash, they can just paste that hash and try to find out who that hash as an existing, as an existing, existing uh, how do I call it? As that existing related, plain text. For example, if I just put one, two, three, that's something that is very common. Once someone paste that, uh, that one, two, three into the online platform for decryption, they will just get it. Let me just paste this one, this one for MD5.
So if someone gets your hash, they can just paste it and try to run to run it, I'm to paste it on some platforms and try to find out if they can decrypt and uh, get the plain text so that they can use it for their intent. So you can see how our, our hash was found. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes, you can. Our hash was found, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's why you find uh, most of the organizations uh, are advising us to use a strong password that is not commonly used. And uh, maybe uh, we try to combine characters so that it may not be get out there that, that easily. So I believe I'm done unless there is someone who has a question. Hello. Uh, yes, um, I think Tony, Tony, you can take over the questions bit. Hello, can you get me? Hello, Nancy, am I audible? Yes, 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 you are. Okay, great. Uh, I think there's somebody who, uh, I think Sharon Moon, she asked her question, but I think Domain do, do answered her. Uh, she was asking, but why is, is there still information in plain text, pertaining the same password and user information? I think when you are trying to demonstrate the, when you are trying to, to demonstrate the, was it, I think it was SHA-1, but I think yes. it's domain, uh, domain, yeah, it's if domain uh, just answered that one. I can't see any other question over the chat. Uh, maybe I can just request members, if you have a question, you can just ask or even unmute and you can text in the comments or even unmute and just ask. And uh, maybe just to add on what John finished with about using a strong password, you can go for password generators and also have like a password manager to store the password. So I think that's more, it's more secure because you get a password that that got uh, so many mixed characters. Okay, John, I think there's a question here. What are some of the modern methods of cryptography? Hello, John? Yes, 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 I can get you. Yeah, there's a question. What are some of the modern methods of? Okay, there are there are there are so many types of cryptography. I could not be able to look at them all. Uh, most of them that I've demonstrated are still in use. MD5 and SHA1. Uh, I think I, there there is a time. I think two months ago, I downloaded a, a particular file for an OS by the name Cubes. It had a MD5 signature to verify that the file that you have downloaded is exactly the same file that was uploaded by the the owner. So this file had a MD5 signature. Once you download it, you also download the signature and you try to verify it if the file is what exactly was uploaded by the owner of that file. And if there was a modification, the signature will not be able to match. And therefore, you'll be informed that uh, this file is not the original one. It has been modified in between. Okay, uh, thanks for that. I think I can just add something. Maybe we can, the ones that okay, I've just seen support. someone asking, could I elaborate more about hashing algorithm? Okay, an algorithm is just a someone you just use a certain mathematical formula to manipulate data in a certain way. And from the other hand, 
that same man, man, mathematical formula is used to manipulate the same data to reverse it back to the original format. Yes. Uh, John, I think there's a uh, one more question. Uh, where are passwords stored in a PC, and what of, and what type of cryptography is used? Hello. Hello, John. Okay, the password in a PC are, are stored. Okay, I can't remember the exact the exact uh, the exact name of that location where the, the passwords are stored, but the passwords are stored in a PC and they are in encrypted format. So you can't get you can't get the, the password of a PC in plain text. Uh, the password if it's just something you logged in uh, from online, the password that, the passwords are stored in the browser, but the password specific for logging in into the PC is stored somewhere from the Windows files, but other passwords for logins are stored in, in the browser. Okay, uh, I think I can add up that one. Uh, for Windows, those who have tried uh, password cracking, for Windows, I think they are stored in the SAM, SAM database. Yeah, that if you, you can use the NTLM, hash cracker, or this other tool called, uh, this, this other tool, okay, can't remember. For Linux, I think it's Shadow, I think. Okay, the, there is another question for you. Can someone decrypt something like a photo being sent to someone or anything else apart from passwords? Which type of cryptography will be used? Oh, yes. Can someone decrypt something? Uh, yes, okay. If you manage to get the decryption key or maybe if you manage to crack, if you manage to crack that particular that particular hashing algorithm that was used, you can be able to get the message in plain text, of which cracking takes, takes a lot of time. It will take you time waiting for particular, the plain text to be generated. Then there is someone who asked, uh, I've just remembered, what are the modern types of cryptography? Okay, we have something we call stagnography. Stagnography is where uh, 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 a message or maybe information can be hidden inside an image. So someone sends you an image, and then from your hand, once you receive that image, there is a particular software that you'll be able to put a certain passcode or maybe the decryption key to get the message that is hidden in that image. It has actually been used for malicious purpose where, 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 the, uh, where someone with a malicious event or malicious actor uh, creates an image, they, they invent a malware, an exe, or whatever the type of malware it is, they send it to the target. Once the target clicks on the image, the malware gets activated, it, it, it starts to do whatever it was programmed to. Okay, okay, John, thanks for that. Uh, I think to add on steganography, mm. Okay, guys, I would want you to go and search up on something. It was called Cicada, Cicada 301. It's an interesting story and uh, it involves steganography. So just check it up. Uh, okay, there was a question from Isaac, Isaac G. For you, John, is there a way of deciding which algorithm to use or how do we choose the algorithm? Yes, yes. So for instance, if you are, if you are doing a website, you can use the the algorithm, for example, the MD5 that I've just shown in SHA-1, in my machine, it's supporting the, 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 the version of PHP that I'm using, supporting SHA-1 and the MD5. Then it depends also with the, the type of application you are dealing with. If you are dealing with an Android application, there are maybe the algorithm that you can be able to implement. It also depends on uh, how, how, how fast, oh, no, no, not fast. It also depends on which type of data 
you are trying to to encrypt. For instance, if it's a if it's a, a network communication through a network, let's say a Wi-Fi network, you'll use another encryption type, just like uh like the RC4 and the others that are available. Okay, there's one more question from David Gashemi. Uh, in asymmetric encryption, how is the key transferred to other parties without being exposed? In a symmetric encryption. Okay, let's say we are, we are developing an application. Let's say it's, a, it's an Android application or it's a, a web chatting application. Once we are implementing, we, we, have, a, we have to implement the, the, the receiving hand and uh, the sending hand, the part A and part B. This is where now we will come up uh, with an algorithm on how our message will be encrypted and how it will be decrypted from the far hand. Since it's the same platform and we as the developers have came up with the application we are going to determine how the, the decryption and encryption will be done in the application. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, let me see, there's one more question. <laughs> this, is in, this is quite interesting from Ben Chege. For that, for the Netflix streaming, how are they able to encrypt their files that you can't access them from the file manager and make them log to the device that was used to download and can't play on any other video player? Uh, for the Netflix, <laughs> uh, I can't say much about Netflix. Maybe uh, anyone with a much knowledge about the, that, okay. Personally, I'm not a user of Netflix, so maybe anyone with much knowledge about Netflix can uh, just admit and comment something about it. Okay, anybody, anyway, member can you can try maybe contribute to this one. Also, I'm also not well familiar with that, but I think uh, I think there are also private algorithms that are used by different companies, like just for additional security. But maybe if a member who has idea has an idea about that, maybe you can just unmute and say something. Okay, and for those who are asking if the session was recorded, yeah, you can see it was recorded and uh, it will be available on YouTube in the SheHacks channel. Uh, okay, so I can see a question from, uh, from Rabe. Is asymmetric cryptography? Uh, huh. <laughs> The decryption for asymmetric key can only be done with a uh, with the private key. Let me just give an instance of a. Uh, I give you a car box where you have to to put a message. I give you the car box and I give you the padlock. So you see, I've given you the car box, the padlock, and I remained with the key. Now in this case, our the padlock will act as the public key, where you can you can lock my stuff over there in the car box and then send that stuff to me. So in between, there is no one who has access to the car box. It's just me who has the key. So in this case, our just an instance where our car box will, uh, will act uh, as the message or maybe the container for the message. The, the padlock will act as the public key, which is known, which, which is broadcasted to everybody. And then, uh, the key remains with the receiver. So there is no one who is going to break him into the, unless they use the brute force way, which guys have tried to use. But it will just be difficult to get the, the original meaning of the message. Uh, 
Any other question? Mm, I can't see any, any more questions on the chat. Maybe I can hand over back to Nancy. Nancy, maybe you can just take over. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Tony, for taking us through that uh, the question bit, the Q&A. And in case there's any other question, maybe you can just type it in the chat box. Also, allow me to uh, also highlight and insist <laughs> that this session uh, would be up on our YouTube channel. So please remember to uh, subscribe so that you can be notified anytime we go live because you have sessions on Tuesday and on Thursday as well. So uh, thank you so much, John, for sharing with us today. And it, it was informative. I've honestly learned so much myself. So thank you so much for making time. And uh, the, for everyone else who has joined us, who has uh, stayed through the entire session, thank you so much. And um, yes, I don't think maybe Stella would say something and then maybe we can close. Thank you, John. That was a well prepared session. Um, for some questions that I can see that were not maybe understood, like the one for Netflix and the other one for, I think, Morathe. If you feel your question was not well answered, just join our Telegram group. I've shared the link. Then you can continue the conversation and help you understand where you're not uh, sure. So thank you again. You guys are doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Estella. And yes, she has, uh, she has shared the link to the Telegram group. So please join us. Uh, we, we discuss, we attend to questions, we share opportunities. So kindly join uh, the SheHacks Telegram group. And um, yes, uh, also before we come to the end of the session, I also would love to highlight that. Uh, thank you for joining us again for this the Tuesday session. We'll have another session next week. And to invite you for the session that we are having on Thursday, make time. Uh, you can check our social media pages, she Hacks Kenya, uh, the link will be there. So yes, join us for the Tuesday and the Thursday session. So looking forward to seeing you there. We share and we learn so much as a team. So yes, thank you and uh, good night everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Good night, guys. And uh, for those who want to continue the conversation, we'll be waiting in Telegram. Thank you. Thank you.